What's up guys, if you left a comment in the comment section of the last weekend video that we did, then you are eligible for a giveaway of a 5th anniversary racing snail mount. And the winner of that is... Boom, right there. Congratulations, we'll be sending the code to you just shortly in your YouTube inbox, so make sure to check out there. This week, we're going to give away another 5th anniversary racing snail mount because it was so popular in the last weekend video, I figured I'd go ahead and give away another one. So if you guys would like to be eligible to be in this giveaway, all you have to do is leave a comment in the comment section below this video with your character name and server. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and punch that like button. The winner will be announced in the next weekend video, so good luck everyone. What's up guys, Grim here. Today we're going to go over a Pyromancer PvP build and this is a little bit different than the previous build that I had made a guide on and it has some soul points swapped around, macros are changed around, so I hope you guys enjoy this new build. Alright, so it must be said right off the bat that this is a beginner's guide or a casual guide. If you're one of the hardcore people that thinks every little single thing needs to be separated out of macros, then you probably shouldn't be watching a guide in the first place because you're a master of the class you don't need a guide so this is for everybody else that would like to actually learn the the soul and uh, how to PvP with it so here goes the soul tree and if you'd like to see this on a web page and not have to pause the video or squint at your screen please refer to the description below this video and I will have a link down there for you guys so this is 61 into Pyromancer, and so you fill up the entire tree, and then we put 12 points into Stormcaller, which is 4 points into High Voltage, 5 points into Storm Energy, 1 point into Living Storm, and 2 points into Conductive Medium. And then the third soul we went into is Harbinger, and we put 3 points into Eldritch Knowledge. And the uh, masteries that we have over here is the level 61 is Arcanus Shield. The 62 we have Healing Exigency or whatever. I guess that's how you say it. Uh, level 63 we have Elder Swiftness. Level 64 we have Sparking Destruction. And level 65 this is highly uh, debatable what you would like to use. I use Phantom Stream because I have to have a heal at all times in PvP. I'm somebody that gets focused a lot. Everybody tries to kill the Grim Meister in PvP. So it is a terrible feeling for me always to get so much DPS thrown my way and then whenever I line a sight and take cover uh, I can't break combat or heal myself and eventually somebody runs around and kills me. So I like to to have some kind of heal and this is the heal for me if you'd like to do more damage you can go with ethereal blast here this is a real common one that people use and it is going to make you kill people a lot better than uh, the build that I normally run here because this is a lot more DPS which I go for healing all right so the macros or let's go ahead and go into the buffs first the buffs that you will need is pyromancer's armor and lightning charge and then any guild or planar buffs consumables all that stuff that you guys might need all right so let's go ahead and go into the macros now uh not the chloromancer pyromancer okay so the way that i have these macros constructed is that they're made to be always moving for the most part if you stand still it's going to just cast regular fireballs uh you know pretty much all the time so anytime that you get rooted or something and you accidentally hit this button uh you know one too many times it will start casting fireball which is not a bad thing and so you don't get punished for accidentally hitting your macro whenever you get uh rooted so this macro in particular fires off things in a certain pattern in order to boost damage and also have it to where it's going to uh, build up charge. And it's also got uh, Fulminate in here, which is a big cooldown. If you guys want to take this out of your uh, macro, feel free. It is... Uh, a really powerful ability I like to use it as fast as it comes off cooldown because I usually knock people down as fast as I can with this type of macro and then go into my big burst abilities to finish them off all right so the this is basically our spam button here 
All right, so then we have a secondary button that is pretty much the same thing as the first one, except for this one actually has internalized charge in it. So what I use this for is I fire this off and uh, until it puts up my internalized charge and it does not punish me if I accidentally push the button one too many times. I can keep pushing it and it's going to start firing off the normal spam abilities and it you know, it isn't going to make it to where I all of all of a sudden am not casting anything. Uh, so I can push this button as many times as I like. Whenever I see the internalized charge go up, then I can go back to my normal spam macro. Now, the reason why you can't use this spam macro, uh, this uh, internalized charge macro just constantly is that it's really weird how internalized charge works. It eats up some of your charge and you're trying to build up charge the entire time that you're playing your character and internalized charge actually eats up some of your charge. Well, you would think that whenever you hit internalized charge, it would put up the six, you know, charges on you, so to say, and then, you know, it wouldn't refresh until all those charges are gone. That's not necessarily the case. It is actually something that will fire off again whenever you still have three charges left. So it's a really terrible thing that it works like that, but you have to accommodate it by having a secondary macro here. All right, so the next macro we have is our big burst abilities here, which is Fusillade and Flame Volley. All right, then we have a Heat Wave macro, and this is what I like to spam if I know that I'm needing to reset all of my cooldowns and stuff like that. I'll go ahead and fire off Heat Wave and it'll make my fireballs cast much faster. All right, then we have our uh, Firestorm macro here, which this is a GTAE that makes it to where you don't have to target the ground. Basically, you can just target another player and then it will put the Firestorm right on them and AOE everybody around that area. All right, then we have the macro here, which is for my heal. Uh, like I said, I like to run this particular build with a heal. So uh, this is my target self Phantom Stream and this is gonna be self heal. All right, so the buttons down here, we have it to where we have the spam button that's gonna build up our charge. We have the secondary spam button that is gonna put up internalized charge, uh, which is gonna increase our damage if you're not familiar with internalized charge. Then we have a center burst button here. We have our big burst macros. Uh, then we have our heat wave macro. We have our firestorm macro. And then we have Ride the Wind, just in case uh, we want a movement speed increase by 50%, and it removes all uh, crowd and movement impairing effects. Uh, then we have Flicker, which is gonna be our uh, teleport forward, and it removes all crowd control effects as well. All right, then we have Phantom Stream, which is our healing macro. We have uh, Living Storm here, which is a very, very good ability whenever you're trying to stop people from uh, flag capping. And then we have Break Free, which we always want that on a separate button. Don't put that in your macros like a lot of people tend to do. It's a terrible idea to put it in your macros because if you do and somebody just does something like a a snare on you or something you know you're a range class you don't care about a snare but if you're actually putting that in your macros you're you're going to fire off that break free and then it's going to waste it basically whenever somebody is going to stun you afterwards and then kill you if you can't get out of that stun all right so then you have scorch which is our interrupt up here uh we have burn which is uh debilitate for five seconds we have Burning Bonds, which is our root for eight seconds. It's gonna make people, you know, not be able to move. Uh, then we have Rift Tomb. This is a planar attunement ability. If you do not have it, then you probably won't have it on your bar. But if you have the planar attunement to get this ability, it is highly recommended because this is great whenever you're fighting uh, two separate people at once. You can Rift Tomb one and then start killing the other one. And whenever the first one gets out of the Rift Tomb, probably you'll have the first person killed and can move on to the next one. All right, so then we have Fading Light. This is another break free, basically. It removes all crowd, uh, all control and movement impairing effects. It is another planar attunement ability. So if you do not have enough planar attunement, you will not have this ability. All right, so 
you guys might have noticed right off the bat that we have tons and tons of break free type of abilities. We have Fading Light, which is a PA ability, uh, a planar ability. We have uh, Break Free, which is given to everybody. We have Flicker. This is going to be our teleport forward, but it also removes all crowd control effects. We have Ride the Wind, which increased movement speed by 50% and removes all control and movement impairing effects. We have tons of ways to get out of things, so that is one of the things that makes Pyromancer so, so good. But what really is the, the main thing with Pyromancer is its burst ability, and it can do it at range. Whenever you talk about burst abilities, a lot of times you talk about melee builds like a Paragon or a Shaman or something like that. Pyromancer can do nearly the same thing at range. All right, let's get right into how to play this build. It's pretty simple for the most part, but it is a build that is meant to be moving for the most part. Uh, I'm a firm believer in PVP that you need to keep moving as much as possible. If somebody is just not paying attention to you and you're able to tee off with them, you know, with a uh, heat wave and just, you know, nuking them down with fireballs, cool but for the most part pvp doesn't happen that way you need to keep moving a moving target is not as appealing to attack as somebody that is standing still if i see a mage that's standing still you better believe i'm going to be attacking that person because most likely they're not going to be using movement to try to get away from me or line of sight me but if i see a mage that is constantly bobbing in and out of the combat i will know that if, as soon as i start damaging that person He's probably going to get out of my range and then all that DPS cooldowns and everything that I used on that person is going to be you uh, completely wasted because that person is going to play smarter. So that is how this build is meant to be played for the most part is with movement and all the macros are triggered in that way. So the first thing that you want to do anytime that you are facing your opponent is you want to hit your secondary macro here, which is going to trigger your internalized charge. And that will make it to where you will have six charges of internalized charge. And that will make it to where the next six damaging abilities that you do will have increased damage to them. So let's go ahead and pretend that we're running up to our first opponent and uh, let's keep at range. Well, we don't need to melee this person. All right, so we're going to hit our secondary macro and you will see to the right of my character, I have K alert showing that the internalized charge is up and it shows how many charges I have left of it below or above it, should I say. Now I will have all the K alerts in the description below this video, so please feel free to uh, refer down there and get the code for the K alerts and put it into your system and you can modify it however you would like on your screen. Uh, as far as the cooldowns over here where I have it showing the fusillade and flame volley of our big uh, nuke button here, I have it to where I have, uh, let's see, edit layout. You will see that I just moved the ability bar here and made it you know, transparent in the background. Uh, you can do that through various settings. Let me see if I can, uh, let's see, settings here, interface, oh, interface. Uh, I think it's action bars here. Uh, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Um, okay, so here you see it says show all action bars. You can click that off and it'll make it all disappear and then any abilities you have there will just show up by themselves and you don't have to worry about the bar you know eating up your screen for the most part i like to use this because whenever you use k alerts with this stuff whenever it does a cooldown such as uh, like if i cast a fireball you see where the cooldown does the the clock around so to say that makes it to where it disappears off of the k alerts a lot of times and i don't like that so i made sure to make an additional bar there that's going to show me whenever my cooldowns are up all right so once we have our internalized charge up let's go ahead and move and get it up again uh, you will see that things will proc over here on the side now the thing that we're mainly wanting to look for is our cinder burst proc and since we got internalized charge up we can go to our main spam ability here and go ahead and start firing away and as you can see cinder burst just came up so we'll go ahead and hit our cinder burst button 
and it will fire it off. Just like if you're used to playing an Inquisitor, it will have a de bolt of depravity proc and you need to use it up before the countdown timer goes off. That is the same thing with the Cinder Burst. Whenever you're running around spamming your abilities, Cinder Burst will proc over there and then you need that uh, to use that ability within that amount of time in order to get this really powerful ability to go off. So that's the normal rotation of this build. It's basically try to get your internalized charge up with the secondary spam button. And like I said, if you hit it a few too many times on accident, it is okay if you got a little bit of lag or else you're just a little bit clumsy with the fingers. It is cool. It is not going to punish you whatsoever. I have the macro set up in a certain way that it's basically like a safety net. You can play this and not fail at it too much. All right, so once you have your internalized charge up, go ahead and start hitting your main spam button and it's going to fire off lots of things and also trigger your cinder burst procs. One of the big things that it's also gonna fire off is fulminate. Now this is a very powerful ability and it's gonna knock people down pretty well. I like to keep it in the macro because I like to use my other big cooldowns in order to finish people off. People like to uh, separate Fulminate on a separate button. As you get more advanced with Pyromancer, feel free to take that out of the macro. It's highly recommended by a lot of people. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a good way to go. All right, so after you have that normal rotation down, you will notice that a lot of the Pyromancer abilities are on cooldowns. And uh, as you're running around casting your abilities, you'll notice that you'll automatically start firing off some lightning abilities. All right, so the lightning ability that you'll fire off is called Thundershock. And once that starts going off, you really need to let your fire abilities come off of their cooldown. So what you want to do normally with that is go ahead and use up your uh, heat wave and start casting fireballs. If you're not ready to, you know, use your heat wave because heat wave is, uh, you know, on a cooldown itself and it makes your fireballs cast a lot faster and stuff like that. And um, if you don't want to use that up, you can, of course, just stand still and hit your normal spam button and it will start casting fireballs from there. Uh, but once you start casting them, of course, you're going to get all the procs and stuff that happen with it, such as maybe cinder bursts and stuff like that. Uh, you can, of course, make sure that you have your internalized charge up for this as well. Now, um, after you cast several fireballs, most of your fire abilities will be back up off a of cooldown and you can go back to your normal movement rotation. Um, after that, the things that we need to go over is the burst abilities here. This, uh, these two right here are the big ones. This is Fusillade and Flame Volley. Uh, they are very, very powerful to say the least. Whenever you stand still and you have to stand still with uh, uh, Fusillade, you go ahead and hit it and it's going to do a lot of damage. It's basically going to fire off a bunch of fireballs all in the streamline like you just seen. Uh, it's very good to make sure that you have internalized charge before you do that. However, if you don't want to use that huge ability there, you can use flame volley just by moving whenever you hit your burst ability. So as you can see, it can be used while moving. And uh, this first ability, Fusillade, is going to be more powerful than Flame Volley, but both are very powerful. You get to pick and choose whether you stand still or are moving, and it will fire off one or the other. Now, as you can see, they got a little bit of a cooldown, a one-minute cooldown on each, so pick and choose wisely. Don't start firing off this Fusillade whenever you see somebody is about to line of sight you or something. All right, so after that, we have a uh, Firestorm. Let's go ahead and hit that. You'll see that it has a GTAE to where it's going to cast right on your target and hit everybody around. Uh, it's also very good to have internalized charge for that. It's good to have internalized charge up for just about everything, so make sure that you do that. All right, then we have uh, one of our uh, escape abilities here, which is Ride the Wind. Um, this is going to increase our movement speed and also uh, break free a bunch of stuff. And then we have Flicker. This is another uh, getaway ability. If we start getting hit, we can turn around and flicker away. And as you can see, it put us some distance away from our enemies there. All right, so then we have our self-targeting heal. If you ever get damaged quite a bit and you decide to go with heals like I do, uh, it is definitely going to take away quite a bit of your DPS. So it's a big choice to go with the heals over the, uh, the DPS uh, option at the level 65 
uh, mastery. So let's go ahead and hit that and you'll see it automatically targets me and I don't even have to worry about it. Next up we have Living Storm and this is basically the ultimate interrupt ability whenever it comes to stopping people from picking up flags to flag capping to picking up the fang whatever you want whatever you want to stop people from doing so whenever you put this on a target it's going to basically hit everyone around that target as well with a dot and it, it lasts for like 16 seconds yeah 16 seconds up to eight enemies in a seven meter uh range from the initial target so whenever you slap this down it's basically going to hit everybody there so if we go ahead and cast it you will see that everything starts to get dotted up there and this is like the most annoying ability ever if you get hit by it while trying to cap a flag or something. It's uh, if you're running up and you see a whole team of enemies are down there at the codex, you can slap this living storm, get out of uh, range or else line a side up on the, the cliff and wait until your allies come up and they won't be able to cap the flag a lot of times. Very broken ability to say the least. All right, so then we have our break free uh, on a separate button. I've already went off uh, over all of that. Then we have our interrupt here, which is Scorch. And this is very, very powerful for a Pyromancer. Let me see if I can show it to you on the Soul Tree why it's so powerful. Uh, yeah, right here, Flash Burn. We have it to where your Scorch now stuns the target for five seconds. Uh, Scorch cannot stun the same target more than once every 45 seconds. So this is so powerful. It is crazy. So if you actually interrupt somebody, it's going to stun them on top of it. As if the, the interrupt wasn't bad enough. So yeah, Pyromancer has a lot of good things going for it. All right, next we have Burn, which is a debilitate for five seconds. So go ahead and debilitate your targets and then blow them up. Here we have Burning Bonds, which this is one of the main abilities that I use whenever playing a Pyromancer because uh, all the time somebody's trying to get at you or get away. So if a melee is coming at you, go ahead and root them and then use your flicker to get away if you need to or else your uh, ride the lightning or uh, yeah, ride the wind, I mean. And then, uh, you know, just get away. But a lot of times people will try to get away from you. So they'll try to line of sight you and stuff. And I'll always throw the burning bonds on them to keep them right in my sight. They thought they would be able to line of sight me and get away, but they're not going to be able to. I'm going to burn and bonds them and then blow them up afterwards because they're probably going to be uh, pretty worn down at that point anyway. All right, so then we have Rift Tomb. This is another huge, huge ability. If you have the planar attunement to get Rift Tomb, you will uh, be using this quite a bit. The bad part about this is it's pretty much on a two minute cooldown. So if you get pretty reliant on it, it's, it's easy to always get in the mind frame of using it and then you can't use it with a two minute cooldown. Two minute cooldowns are just insanely long and really takes away from your ability to uh, you know, use this as a normal rotation kind of thing. All right, then we have Fading Light, which is another planar two min ability, and it is basically another break free. So it's really, really good if you have the planar attunement for it. Well, that's it, guys. That's basically how you play Pyromancer. Uh, we'll go over it one more time just so that you guys know exactly what I said in the video. Basically, hit your secondary spam button in order to get internalized charge up because that's going to be a big damage increase for you. And then start hitting your spam button uh, and keep moving the entire time while you're doing this because that's how this build is basically played. If you ever decide to stand still and hit your spam button, you'll start casting fireballs. Uh, it, it won't be like reduced cast time or any of that for the most part. But it's very, very good to cast fireballs, so don't think it's a bad thing. Um, and then make sure to use your cinder burst procs whenever they come up and if you ever get to the point where you start casting your uh lightning spells or any of that or else if you have a chance to just tee off on people with fireballs go ahead and just stand still and use your heat wave macro and it will fire off heat wave and start casting fireballs pretty fast all right then after that all you have to do is use your uh, getaway abilities your roots your interrupt that is going to stun people you got to debilitate you got a rift tomb you got four different break freeze you got so many things that you can do as a pyromancer to survive uh and then you'll be blowing everybody up whenever you're not trying to survive so 
yeah very very powerful uh spec to say the least i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to smash that like button as usual my name is grim and i'll see you next time